is the market gonna pop? Are we gonna see a housing bubble? Because the last time prices were this high, we saw the market reverse and collapse in so many markets around the country. So should you be worried about this? Well, let's ask ourselves a couple things. So one, what determines if somebody can make their mortgage payment or not, right? One is what interest rate is that mortgage at and what is that total mortgage payment compared to their income? So do you think people today are making more money or less money than what they did in 2005? Because if house prices are finally back at that level, what we need to ask ourselves is, okay, are people making more money than what they did back then that led them to not be able to make those payments? And so I wanna walk you guys through that. So there's a big, very important thing that you'll hear about, and it's called the Case-Shiller Index. And it measures house prices across the United States in most markets. And that Case-Shiller Index is the number that finally hit that all-time high again that we saw in 2005. Now, what determines what wages are is something that they use as far as twofold. One is called a consumer price index and the other one is called wage growth. So wages, believe it or not, have grown by 31% since 2005, 31%. So meaning somebody that was making $100,000 is now making $131,000 due to inflation. Meaning every year wages ticked up to kind of match inflation. What is inflation? That is the dollar amount that something goes up every year, meaning the gallon of milk one year ago compared to a gallon of milk today has gone up approximately 3%. And two to 3% is typically an annual appreciation. So what you're gonna see is all other than 2009, we've seen inflation every single year. 2009 was the only year that we actually saw prices fall across all consumer goods. So if somebody is making 31% more money than they did in 2005 in the exact same position. Well, still prices and mortgage payments were really high back then. Well, another big thing to consider is, is guess what? The payment on a $400,000 mortgage loan in 2005 compared to a $400,000 mortgage loan here in 2020 is substantially higher in 2005 than 2020. So you've got to think about that reversal. So think about that. So if we had a house price that was $400,000 in 2005, okay? That interest rate, the average interest rate back then was six and a quarter percent interest. What is a $400,000 mortgage loan today? Average interest rate right now is about 2.75%. So think about that. This person was paying double or more the interest. So. Question, if this person on this loan was paying on an annual, you look at that every year, it's roughly paying an extra $700 a month in interest. And this person was making 31% lower wages. What we had happened. So house prices did just finally hit this high, but what was it offset by? A 31% increase in wages and interest rates that dropped almost 4%. So a little statistic, 60% of all the mortgages in the United States are under 4%, 60% of them. 80% of the loans that have been originated since 2015, the last five years, have an average credit score of over a 720. Now, do you know what that number was back in 2005? 80% of the mortgages had a credit score of under a 680 under a 680. So think about that. The average credit score in 2005 was about a 661 across the country. Do you know what the average credit score is today? 731. So what do we have? We just cause house prices are back at those levels again, does not mean house prices and homes are the same expensive nature and that burden that a human being feels to make that mortgage payment. Why? Just as the house price is the same, doesn't mean the mortgage payment's the same. Because when you have that much lower of an interest rate, you have a much, much lower payment for the same amount borrowed. And if you have wages that are 31% more than they were 15 years ago, you probably have a little bit of extra money to cover that mortgage payment, right? And now on top of that, 
mortgage loans today versus mortgage loans here. Back in 2005, almost half of the mortgage loans that were originated were variable interest rate loans, meaning they were a not fixed rate mortgage. So those rates climbed. So when people got in trouble, when their wages was falling back in 2007, 2008, 2009, 2010, guess what? Their mortgage payment was going up while their income was going down. Let me just tell you, do you know how many variable mortgages modern lending has originated this year out of the almost 1500 loans we've done? Zero. Everybody has a fixed rate first mortgage. So not only do you have people making more money, you have substantially lower interest rates, fixed rate mortgages, and now home prices are just finally back at those levels. So this isn't adjusted for inflation, right? Because a dollar back in 2005 got a lot more than it does today to buy milk, to buy burgers, to buy gas. But guess what? That dollar today still gets you the same price of home, right? Because those house prices are just back there. So when you're looking at being concerned of a housing crash, do not use price to dictate affordability because you are making an absolute asinine mistake and you're severely wrong because what people pay on a monthly basis for that home and what they bring in is what dictates their ability to pay their mortgage, not what their home price is worth.